Okay, Kavin. So this is the NRC rankings in computer science. Okay, so this is a National Research Council. This used to be an institute like 20 years back. They put up these rankings. Uh, but this gives a good sense of where, I mean, it's pretty much based on doctoral research, but it's also a good proxy for master's level programs and jobs and all that. So let's look at it, right? Stanford, MIT, Berkeley, they're all super close to each other. They're as good yep. as anyone else. So there's no real dif differentiation between these three places. Carnegie Mellon, again, it's one of the good schools. Cornell is another one of the other good schools. Princeton is pretty much, uh, it offers only doctoral programs. Um, but all, most of these universities like Princeton, Cornell, MIT, they're all based on the East Coast. They're right, right next to each other in the New York right. State or that region, the New Jersey region. Princeton is in New Jersey. Uh, Cornell is um, around, it's, it's probably 100 miles or 200 miles away from uh, New York City. So that's where it is. University yes. of Illinois Urbana-Champaign is under the solid Midwest school. Uh, yeah, I, I heard about this one. They so have an M engineering also. Oh, is it? Then again, that's a great place to apply. University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. So Netscape was actually discovered in UIUC. So that's a great place to be in, but it's very competitive. In fact, a lot of the IIT gold medalists end up going to UIUC or Cornell or Texas Austin. That's where they do the PhD program. So oh, um, okay. I would just say that it's just a competitive place, but just if you get in, it's definitely worth joining. Washington, Wisconsin, we already discussed, right? These are some top schools out there. Harvard, Caltech don't even bother applying. They're too selective. It's a little bit like Princeton. Mm. Super difficult to get in. Brown, Yale, again, they're just... These Ivy League schools, unfortunately, they don't have master's programs. So I don't think all yeah. these places has any meaningful program you can apply to. Okay, let's go down the list. So you of Maryland, again, it's got some solid programs in computer science. A lot of IIT students end up going there. Um, and the reason why I say IIT students is that I think IIT students have kind of like perfected the art of applying to universities because they've been doing that for the past 50 years. Like every university topper, right, uh, or whatever, the branch topper keeps applying to certain universities. Over time, there is a certain legacy for them when they apply. And um, they get brand, like since there are a large number of IITs, right, there's more guarantee that you get better students coming from these places. So I have a lot of friends who have actually gone to UCLA to do PhDs, Maryland to do their PhDs. NYU also has a bunch of master's programs they opened up pretty recently. Uh, they actually did a merger between NYU, I think the Tandon School of Engineering. And uh, they've gotten a lot of funds off late. So I think they opened up a lot of the computer science programs. And I think the idea for NYU is to expand access to as many students as possible, and not to be super selective. So actually, you may actually find a lot of great programs out there. The only problem with the East Coast is that in places like New York, the cost of living can be extremely, extremely expensive. So you're talking yeah. about like $3,000 a month of living expenses, right? Uh, so even if you get scholarships, uh, Again, you just need to score watchful. You, cost of, you could burn a lot of cash trying to live in New York or San Francisco, the mm -hmm. most expensive right. places to be in, New, in the US. University of Massachusetts is, again, I think when you're coming to some universities which are not at the top of the list for everyone, right, but are great schools, I think Massachusetts, University of Massachusetts, is, they got a bunch of campuses, I think in Dartmouth, in Boston, in Lowell, Amherst. and so on. Amherst, yeah. So I think Amherst is most well known. But again, it's it's a place which definitely is worth applying to. Rice University in Texas, more focus on PhD programs. But again, it's also a good place to apply to. University of Southern California. Uh, again, it's a pretty small campus actually. I've uh, been there uh, and super small campus. And it's also a little bit a shady part of, of Los Angeles. Okay. So I'm not that. sure if, I mean, it's, it's a great film school and all that, Like, uh, but I just don't know if it's the best for everyone. Uh, so uh, one follow-up question I had with respect to this. Um, for example, you said Texas has a lot of jobs, right? Yeah. But I mean, a lot of us Indians would also be probably concerned with the gun culture over there. So, yeah. so I mean, uh, how does that work out? Like, for example, California, it's very, very like, you know, it's yes. known to be very modern, very yes. diverse, very nice. Yes. Texas, yes. on the other hand, is a kind of an opposite. So how would that play out? Like, for example... I mean, yeah, I mean, it's a great question. So if you're going to go to a remote place in Texas, I would say, yeah, you got to be a little careful uh, in terms of how you come across. Uh, they're not always welcoming foreigners, but then Austin is different, to be frank. Austin is okay. pretty much like a place like San Francisco. Uh, I'm, again, I'm not sure about the way they vote, but I would assume that they vote Democrats uh, during the election times. Uh, and uh, it's a very open, diverse city where I think there's a lot of foreigners out there. So really, I mean, you're not going to find much of a difference between, say, New York and Austin. 
you're going to find a hell okay. lot of people who of different backgrounds. There is a little bit of issue with gun culture, but again, you, unless you're in a remote, like a redneck area in the US, you need not be too worried. Because they have very open carry culture. They can just yes. carry stuff in their pockets without licenses. It's just, and you know, yeah, even though there, I'm, yeah. yeah, and and it's, it's fine for them. I'm sure like that's their culture. But for us Indians, we haven't, you know, we don't have that kind of culture. So we get kind of freaked out by it, so. Yeah, but there are also other places, right, where you, you probably have people carrying handbags and probably have guns inside. So it's just that, I mean, it was not, it always used to exist, but it's just now more apparent because they're yeah. not hiding it anymore. Yes. I wouldn't say like, I mean, I would say look at the, the places which are like big cities, you won't face that big of problems. Uh, you go to remote regions like, again, I think I'm going to be a little biased here, but I've heard that uh, Texas a &M University which is in a place called College Station. It's a little bit of a redneck country, which is what I've heard. Right. So again, it was probably not a great, the greatest of places to apply to, right? If you're coming from oh. outside. Uh, so I think California is definitely very safe. Uh, the yeah, East so. Coast is pretty safe from that perspective. But again, there are places like Austin, uh, there are places like Dallas, Houston, in the, in the Texas uh, state, where it's equally safe. It's as safe as any other US city. End of the day, in US cities, there is no 100% chance or a guarantee of safety. Because anything can happen to anyone, right? I mean, even if you're not supposed to carry guns, I mean, people can be hiding guns inside their body and all that, right? Yeah. So you can get away with it, like in any city in the US. So yeah, it's more likely in Texas, that, but that's, that doesn't make it any more unsafe or safe yes. compared to other cities in the US. Like you can find people in California who act bizarrely. The point is that they're very, like compared to Texas, it would be obviously less. No, I think it's unlikely. That's what I'm trying to say. That when it comes to cities, right, at the end of the day, it, it turns out to be pretty similar in terms of the way they approach it. And yeah. uh, I don't think the, the incidence of crime is any different in, say, San Francisco when you control the population compared to, say, Austin or New York. Like, New York is also not too safe to be in, to be frank. I mean, there are a lot of tourists out there. So a lot of the rich people go and live in the suburbs in New York. Nobody really huh. lives in New York. So yes. the rate of crime in, in, in the city, in downtown, is very, very high. Okay. In most places in the U.S. So if you're talking about, say, a place like Atlanta, right? I mean, it's yeah. sometimes scary to just walk near the Georgia Tech campus. I mean, I've been there. Uh, what Again, Georgia Tech, uh, it's not listed here, but I would rate it among the top five so, schools yeah. for computer science. So excellent school. Uh, but not always the safest, right? Because there's a little bit of the risk of crime being in the center of the city. Uh, there are a lot of unsafe regions in Atlanta. But then when you go to suburbs, you actually find more safe regions. Um, the place like Alpharetta, Sandy Springs, uh, near uh, Atlanta, which is where a lot of the jobs are, all in the suburbs. So I think that's just the nature of U.S. Um, cities that the right smack in the center of the city where all the tourists come are not the safest of regions. Even Chicago, right, right? the center of city is where the most crimes are. Yes. You get outside the city is where you find less crimes. So I'm just saying that it's very difficult to predict crime. And it doesn't mean that if you go to some of them, nothing is going to happen. I mean, there's always a chance of things happening there. The U.S. is very unpredictable. There's a lot of craziness in every part of the U.S. It's not at yeah. all like India, to be mm. frank. So it's just difficult for you to minimize the risk. Uh, but I would say that if you are in one of these college cities where they've got a very well-known university, like the Texas, University of Texas. Cornell. Office, super well -known. Cornell is a college town. It's not even a city. It's not even a town. It's just everything just revolves around the college and the university. So that's so pretty like safe, right? Zero crime almost. Okay. Like nothing that's happens thing. there. Like nobody ever comes to Ithaca for anything else other okay. than education. So it's not really a place where you find drifters coming in and unsavory elements getting in. So yeah, yeah. some place in Illinois, Urbana Champaign is pretty much a college town. Um, Ann Arbor, Michigan, college town. It's also a city, but it's pretty much a college town. It, it grew up around the campus of the University of Michigan. So college towns is a very different experience, very college focused. It's a little bit like when you go to say IIT Roorkee or IIT like come like Guwahati and all those places. Uh, Manipal Institute of Technology, though I mean the whole Manipal area is a college. Yeah, exactly, town. it's very college. Yeah, exactly, it's a college town, right? So I think that's the kind of experience you get. You can be fantastic, and you also get great placement. So it's a mix of both worlds where the cost of living is also much cheaper. Yes. If you're in the Midwest, Purdue, Illinois, and so on, right? The cost of living is damn cheap. Okay. Like you, know, you can like when I was in Madison, Wisconsin, I was getting by with maybe thousand dollars a month. I could get by just oh, wow. like thousand one hundred dollars can easily get by every month. So again, and when you get a research assistantship, right, they basically pay you your tuition. They take care of your tuition. They wave it off. And they give you a living stipend. 
and that pretty okay. much covers all your cost of going to college. So yeah, I'm just saying that you can choose accordingly. Yeah, but again, the opportunities of having fun in a big city is probably not that existent if you're in a college town in a suburb in the Midwest. So it's your trade-off, right? What is it you want? Okay, let's go to the list super quick. Michigan, we discussed college town. Columbia, New York, again, center of the city. Um, University of California, San Diego. Is there any University of California of all got great placements, whether it's a UCSD, uh, even UCSD, Santa Barbara and Santa Columbus. Barbara, like all these have got great placements because uh, just because you're in California, sorry, what's that? Kevin? Proximity to Silicon exactly. Valley. Proximity yeah. to California. So all the San Diego, Santa Barbara, they're kind of closer to LA than San Francisco, but you've got great jobs there. Uh, and most of the companies in the San Francisco region do end up going to these campuses, right? They've got a solid partnership over the past many, many decades. So you can find great jobs in any of these right. places. Okay. University of Pennsylvania, again, I am, it's in the, it's uh, again, Pennsylvania, it's an industrial town, but it's a place where things are kind of dying down. There are not too many companies out there. Uh, there are exceptions like Pittsburgh and all that, where there's some companies coming up because of Carnegie Mellon, right? It's a place called Pittsburgh in the state of Carolina, Pennsylvania. Uh, but I would say that UPenn is a great place to study. They've got a fantastic business school, the Wharton School of Business. Uh, they also got a good engineering program and you can find probably good jobs. But at the end of the day, right? I mean, that's they're all pretty close to the East Coast. And uh, you can probably find like much better schools too in terms of just right. the solid engineering schools. Chicago, uh, Midwest, again, not known for tech. Chicago is not a place for tech. It's basically a place for uh, consumer goods, um, basically a place for like um, media, newspaper companies and so on. So right. it's not really a, for medical companies, but not really a place for tech. Even good med, med schools are over there. I mean, yeah. Yeah, like Madison is a great place for med for like medical tech. Um, the number one place of medical tech is probably Boston. The region, there's a Route 128. There's a lot of uh, like medical companies out there. Like a lot of companies like uh, pharma companies are based out of Boston. Like uh, like Novartis, uh, ROCHE, Roche, all that. Those companies, right? they're all based out of Boston. Uh, Chicago, Madison, they are kind of known for these things, but they're not really known for hardcore software developers. It's not the place where anybody really sets up uh, a place to recruit people. I mean, you can find jobs, but that doesn't mean that it's a haven for, say, tech entrepreneurship or for tech jobs. Purdue Solid Midwest School is one of the top engineering schools in the U.S. The ranking may look a little off, but it's as good as any in the top top 10. Okay. It's just a hardcore engineering school that is known for engineers. And I think Purdue also attracts a lot of people who want to get into the space sector, want to get into aeronautics, who want to, get right, into, huh. want to work in NASA. It's a great place to be. I think that the, the place where you can easily get into NASA is actually through Purdue. Rutgers, I mentioned, this is again a very good school you can apply to. A lot of people who study uh, like, uh, for PhDs in the East Coast uh, end up coming to places like Rutgers and other places. Uh, yeah. For their postdocs or for their first jobs. Like I had a friend who was a topper at IIT Madras, gold medalist, went to Carnegie Mellon, did his PhD, worked at Rutgers for a couple of years, and then went back to Carnegie Mellon as a uh, associate professor. And now he's a full professor. So again, that's a great place to get fantastic talent, and it's a well-known place too. So Rutgers is a great place to study. Again, it's a bit not well known, it's very close to Princeton University, is based in New Jersey. Do you okay. Great reputation. Um, uh, I don't know about the engineering school, but it's very famous for both the business school and for their law program. So Duke is where um, the head of the CEO of Apple, that's where he did his MBA from. North Carolina. So these are all part of the Racist Triangle Park, Duke and North Carolina, University of North Carolina. I think they got two campuses and I think one is Charlotte is probably the more famous one. Good schools, Rochester, again, really good school. The SUNY system is one year in New York where it's easy to get in. It's part of the public university system. And if you're a public university, again, the cost of studying there is going to be much cheaper. Mm -hmm. And SUNY is so even for education. international students, it's yes. cheaper. A lot of international students get into the SUNY system. Okay. It's in this, very much in the suburbs. So cost of living is also going to be much cheaper. But you can still travel to New York if you have time. So it's probably going to be the best of both worlds. So okay. that's a place where not many people apply to the SUNY system. There's SUNY Buffalo, there's SUNY Stony Brook. They've got five, six campuses. 
Georgia Tech have talked about this, like it's like the top five. Uh, this is probably from 20 years back, but things have changed too. So Arizona State University and University of Arizona, these are other top two schools which are not well known, uh, but they're the state of Arizona, very close to California. So you can actually find a lot of students from Arizona State, they actually end up going to jobs in the San Francisco region. Okay. So again, it's they've got a huge enrollment of undergrads. And yeah, a yeah. lot of programs. So again, that's a place where you might find some very good, interesting programs. Um, and you should be, they have the online programs too. I'm just saying there's a lot of options going to that place. And the advantage of it is that you're very close to California. You can actually find a lot of recruiters coming over, recruiting people from there, and you can go to San Fran and work and make much higher compensation. Okay, right. Uh, let's look at Cal Irvine, University of California Irvine, just like the other University of California systems, all of them are comparable, uh, not no different from each other. So I think UCLA, like Berkeley is probably the number one. After that is UCLA. After that, like the University of California, Santa Barbara, Stony Brook, sorry, Santa Barbara, San Diego, uh, California Irvine, Merced, they're all pretty similar to each other. Uh, so you can either apply for any of these things. And, and any of these universities would be really good, right? Because it's it's good proximity to it. It is. I would suspect that they don't have too many master's programs. I think the more focus on the PhD programs. I think that's the only disadvantage which I can I think uh, some of them do have MA engineering programs. If I, they I do, then them. you should apply there. Yeah. Uh, like Santa Barbara, I think it did. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there's an interesting thing about North Cal, North Cal versus South Cal. It's called uh, No Cal versus So Cal. So it's like yeah. a little bit of like a lot of people who like LA don't want to go to San Francisco for work. So they end up finding jobs like Caltech is very close to LA. So you can study there and find jobs in uh, LA. But the only thing about LA is that they don't have too many. I mean, they do have tech jobs. Like for example, the Snap is kind of based out of LA. Snap Incorporated, but at the end of the day, uh, they're not tech companies, but not the same number and volumes as the one in San Francisco, the Bay Area. Mm. So um, there's a little bit of rivalry between both these regions. So people who like LA don't necessarily like uh, Northern California, which is where uh, San Francisco is, and people who like San Francisco don't necessarily like LA. Uh, so you get a feel of the culture when you settle in there, and after some time, right, you don't like the other culture. So I was not a big fan of LA when I went there. Because after some time in the Bay Area, you like Bay Area way more. And there are things about the Bay Area which make it different from LA. So I'm uh, saying but the with, yeah. cost of living there is a lot, right? In the Bay Area. Both are super expensive. Both LA is also as expensive as San Francisco Bay Area. But I think because the tech sector, right? It's probably one step ahead of LA when it comes to all this uh, crazy compensation and cost crazy cost of living. By the uh, way, if but... you are in Bay Area, you can forget ever buying a house. Yeah, that's probably that's well into your 40s or so on because it's super, super expensive. You have to go to some very remote regions if you want to buy a house. Yeah, okay. Sorry, you asked me something, Kevin. I was uh, I was saying that um for example in a bay in the bay area for example if you if you make 150k it might look like a lot but if you come back in Bangalore the same thing translates to 15 lakhs 20 lakhs a year max. Like uh, purchasing power kind of you know. Uh, so I think so the interesting I... factor is probably one is to five or one is to six. So for example, if you're making like a hundred thousand dollar compensation in a city in the US, right, is equal to probably 20 lakhs of compensation in India or 20, right. 25 lakhs. That right. really is a way to look at it. So one fifty thousand dollars seems like a big amount. In fact, when I was in Cisco, we tried to get new hires at one fifty thousand dollars and nobody would pick up the offer because they were getting much higher offers from other companies. Oh, as um, a fresher. Yes. Oh, how's how's that possible? Yeah, so it was so difficult to get good talent um, and we're struggling to find good talent. And maybe things have cooled off a little after this uh, recession has hit us because uh, the composition definitely has probably come down. The recruiting has come down. A lot of the fan companies were recruiting like crazy, which also increases the pressure on wages and compensation. So um, what I would say is that in California, the taxation rates are very high. Right. Oh. The sales tax is also very high. So everything costs a lot more. So a haircut is going to cost you like uh, 40 $50. Uh, so it's like you make a lot, you also spend a lot. Okay. That's the nature of the game. So uh, you're talking about like 35 40% tax. Okay, that's a lot. That's a lot of tax, right? Same and in New the York, Midwest? Right? Same thing. Midwest, I think a little cheaper is probably 20 25% of tax. Okay. So you can basically save more over there. Yeah, you make less, you'll just, you'll just pay less in tax. All right. But like 100K compensation in Minneapolis is a very good compensation. 
you can buy a house in one fifty thousand dollars, a good house in Minneapolis or or Madison, Wisconsin, in one fifty thousand dollars. Uh, but then in if you are in say the Bay Area near Silicon Valley, I mean even if you pay seven hundred thousand dollars, you may just get a small apartment, right? Uh, and then if you want to buy a house, it's probably going to cost you one point five two million dollars. Okay. So you got to shell that amount, and that's not easy to make. It just takes a long time. So almost everyone in the Bay Area is probably making around three hundred thousand dollars, where husband and wife both are working. Uh, both are making like after maybe five ten years of work experience, right? Um, making anywhere between one fifty to two hundred thousand dollars easily. Two of them, so both of them together are probably easily making three fifty thousand dollars. But the catch is if one person loses a job, then your income is going to get halved, um, and your costs of existence in the California region is still going to be sky high. Hmm. So if somebody loses a job, you're going to be deep shit very soon. So again, they're saying that it's not that easy being there too. And things are great, right. it's great. And things are not great, it's going to be messy. Anyway, I think it's too much for you to think about. But again, just give me a glimpse of what life is in the US. No, oh, yeah, I appreciate that. Okay, let's look at the list then, right? Like maybe I'll cover the top 50. Okay, so uh, we talk about SUNY, Georgia Tech, Arizona. Again, I think Arizona is one of the most applied places, like especially Arizona State University. Yeah. Got great programs, great placements, so even more than the University of Arizona. I think University of Arizona is more traditional. Arizona State is way more, uh, it's like um, Harvard and MIT, right? MIT is way more industry focused and Harvard is more academic focused. That's how right. I put it. <laughs> University of Virginia, uh, I think it's got a great business school, but I'm not sure how great it is for tech. Okay, so I'll put a question mark there for University of Virginia. Indiana, again, is the Midwest. Uh, again, any school in the Midwest, if you get, get into computer science, I think it's definitely worth joining for sure. Any of the top 50 schools, 100 schools, most of the professors you meet are all done their PhDs at MIT, Stanford, Berkeley, and so on. So don't, I mean, there's no difference between the faculty you'll meet at MIT versus the person who teach at Indiana University of Michigan, right? They're all pretty much the same. There's only the difference in the research output, which is going to differentiate whether they get tenure at MIT or not. There are people who begin teaching at MIT for the first six years of their lives, do not get tenure, and then move to Midwest. That's very common. So you will find people are taught at MIT and Harvard who actually end up coming to the Midwest to teach or come to the South to teach. So top 50, top 100 universities, like actual quality of research, kind of people you meet are no different from each other. Okay, so uh, that's Indiana. Johns Hopkins is very famous for medical tech. Uh, there's a number one school for medicine, bioengineering, engineering, and so on. I'm not that sure how, not sure how great it is for engineering. It may be good for a PhD in engineering, but maybe not for a master's. Right. Northwestern, very industry focused. Uh, they got some very good programs based out of Chicago, very close to Chicago. So it's like, again, Chicago is not the greatest of places when it comes to finding tech jobs. So again, if you want to find internships and so on, you're probably on your own compared to say being in the East Coast or the West Coast. Ohio State is a fantastic university. It's very much like Madison, Purdue and so on. Um, got some fantastic, great placements. Um, a lot of Columbus, I think has got some good jobs. Um, some of them in tech, but a lot of the companies in California end up going to these places like, um, like I said, Purdue, Madison, Ohio State, Illinois, Michigan. So these are places you can easily apply. And it's probably a good chance where if you're good enough, you could even get a scholarship as soon as you join these places. Utah is a great place for <clears throat> computer gaming chips and so on. I think that's a place where a lot of the gaming companies were created. Uh, but I'm not sure how big the program is. So again, I'll put a question mark here for University of Utah. So the Colorado is a scenic place, very scenic place uh, near Boulder. And I think it's definitely worth applying. Like it's a place where you can easily get scholarships from what I hear. Uh, not super reputed, but they got fantastic programs, awesome outdoorsy place. If you want to really have fun, you got to be in those places like Denver um, and Boulder, right? These are two places right next to each other. The It's one of the most scenic places in the US. Right. And you also get good jobs being there because it's been around for a long time. I think it was initially called the Colorado School of Mines, like 150, 200 years back. But then they also moved into tech and there are good placements. People just keep coming there every year. Oregon Tech, no idea. Um, it's probably close to Seattle. So you'll always find jobs in Seattle if you're in Oregon. University of Pittsburgh. 
it's like Carnegie, it's probably close to uh, Carnegie Mellon University. So you'll always find jobs in University of Pittsburgh. You can always study there and get something. So Pittsburgh is a place with a lot of tech jobs. It's a nascent, newly emerging tech sector. So again, all the jobs open to Carnegie Mellon students uh, in that region could also be open to Pittsburgh. But if you want to work in, say, California or New York or um, Austin, probably it's not easy for you to get noticed from the University of Pittsburgh. So those recruiters are not going to come there. Syracuse, again, very local school based in New York. It's right close to Cornell, I believe, in Ithaca. Um, not super well known. It's well known for for their business school, law school, but not well known, or even for the political science school, not really for engineering. I think Joe Biden's uh, got a JD from Syracuse University. Florida, again, a lot of, uh, it's a newly emerging tech haven, a lot of jobs in the Florida state. So again, it's a good place to apply. This is another must apply place. It's like- uh, Arizona So state. Florida, where exactly? Florida Institute of it's Technology. It's a place called Gainesville. Gaines University of Florida, Gainesville. University of Florida, Gainesville. Yeah. I mean, there is Florida, you know, Florida State University and so on, but I really doubt it, right? This, uh, when it comes to like Penn State, Florida State, there's probably one step below the other ones, like University of Pennsylvania and University of Florida. Uh, but the really famous one in University of Florida is the Gainesville campus. University of Minnesota, Minneapolis. Um, again, a little bit of uh, like a lot of students who come to Madison, they also go to Minneapolis. So they are from that location. So it's a great place to study. And you can always find jobs uh, like a lot of the tech companies also. I mean, it's, it's on par with the uh, Midwest colleges I mentioned earlier, like Purdue, Madison, Ohio State, and so on. But I would say it's probably one step, one rung lesser than them, just in terms of hierarchy and rankings. And it's one of the coldest cities in the US. I think sure. after Alaska, it's probably the coldest city in the US. So if you're not a great fan of cold weather, maybe you should not be thinking about Minnesota. Not that Chicago is any better. Chicago, New York can also be as bad as uh, these places. But I think in Minneapolis, uh, this is called University of Minnesota in Minneapolis, OK? Uh, and the way it works is the temperature in Minneapolis probably like 10, 15 degrees lesser than the temperature in Chicago. Oh, wow. Chicago is also way more windy than Minneapolis. So yeah, it's a little, yeah, it's crazy in both locations. Santa Barbara, we talked. RPI, this is, again, a very, very interesting school. So mainly IIT students apply to Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. A lot of people get full scholarships applying here. It's only meant for tech. It's like MIT, right? It's completely focused on tech. And many, okay. many students get uh, great projects, great internships, great jobs out there. It's an outstanding tech school, but hugely underrated. So definitely you should check this up in terms of if they have MH programs. It's also way, way easier to get in. Like very, very few students apply here. Even though, like I would say, it's I would rank in the top 10, top 15 in terms of a hardcore engineering focus. University of California, Santa Cruz. Santa Cruz is very close to San Jose. So again, right. um, University of California there, you can probably find good jobs there. That's the top, then University of Illinois, Chicago. I, a lot of Indians apply to the University of Illinois, Chicago, but I am just not convinced that it's a great tech school. Um, I've seen people struggle for jobs. I've seen people, um, if you study there, this, uh, some of them I know are actually working in Minneapolis because they couldn't find jobs elsewhere. So that Chicago region is, such that if you don't find recruiters coming in from the East Coast and West Coast, you're pretty much stranded. Then you're in the Midwest where there are not enough tech jobs. Then you scramble to wherever you find these jobs. Right. So, I mean, that way it's a little tricky, but again, it's worth checking out, but it's probably not as famous as the University of Illinois or Banesh Hape. Washington, I'll just go through one or two of the other ones. So, Washington University, St. Louis is called WS, WUSTL, Washington University at St. Louis. It's a pretty good program. It's in the state of Missouri, a highly underrated place, but they've got a very strong engineering program. Again, it's not one program which people think about. So, this could be one of those places where you probably need to do some research. Michigan State is uh, where uh, it's like University of Michigan, Ann Arbor. Got a great program in, I think, in the business school. They've got a great law program. Engineering, they're just picking up. It's doing well. But a lot of the jobs are pretty much in the state of Michigan. So if you want to study automobile tech, uh, like a lot of the companies like Ford and 
uh, with those companies want computer software engineers to work in their R&D centers. And a lot of those companies are based in Detroit in the state of Michigan. So if you want to be in that space, if you want to work in General Motors, Ford, Toyota, you want to work as software developers for autonomous driving and all that stuff, right? That's probably a good place to be in Michigan State. I mean, if you want to be in the automobile sector, you have to apply to the University of Michigan. There are a bunch of campuses. You have to be there. That's where the jobs are. Like those recruiters don't come to the East Coast and West Coast for people. So you have to be in Michigan. If you want to find jobs there in automobiles, that sector. Penn State is like Ohio State. Uh, a lot of places, this is a place a lot of IIT students apply to. Definitely worth applying. Um, they got a bunch of uh, programs. Uh, I'm not sure if they have enough master's programs, but they also have a lot of focus on PhDs. So Penn State is a place where they also offer generous funding. So it's a place where if your funding focus is worth exploring. Okay, come in. Um, yeah, I mean, there's probably a lot more. Let me see if you maybe pick anything else on the list, okay, from what I see here. Um, I talked about Arizona State. I think it's a great place to apply for sure. Texas A&M, a and little bit of redneck country, but they are, again, it's a place where it's super low cost of living. And it's got a strong engineering school, to be frank, no doubt about it. Like if you look at the US news ranking, Texas a and is in the top 10 engineering schools. Oh. I'm a little surprised, but that's the way it's ranked. <clears throat> Case Western is another very good school for mechanical engineering, operations, research, and so on. That's a really good place to study. Uh, not many people apply there, and they only apply there, there for PhD programs, but it's a place in Ohio where you get some very good engineering education. There's also Virginia Tech, by the way. That's something I don't see here, but that's another place to apply. Uh, got a very strong engineering focus. Uh, it's pretty much like RPI, Rensselaer Polytechnic. So Rensselaer Polytechnic is in New York. And Virginia Tech is the state of Virginia, but I think the placements are excellent and they've got a heavy focus on engineering. They give a lot of scholarships too. Texas Arlington is pretty much like Texas Austin. A lot of people there end up getting jobs in Austin, Dallas, Houston. Texas has a lot of jobs. I think right. after Cal, it's probably the largest job creator as a state in the US. So you always get great jobs there. Yeah, I'm not able to really find anything else in this lot. Yeah, I think we basically have run through the list. But everything else, I mean, you can, I, I know people have studied US Alabama, middle of nowhere to be sure. Even jobs, you get kind of messy. But I think there's a, there's a NASA center out there, which is where a couple of my friends are working right now after we're going to US Alabama. Uh, like the Florida state, again, you can find jobs in Florida after studying there. Uh, Lehigh, Worcester, uh, Worcester, it's called Worcester Polytechnic Institute, Lehigh. I mean, these are all places where you can get find some sort of job, but not too recommended. Right. Okay, so Kevin, I'm going to stop here.